Yeah, we're going to start in section 1.4, and we're going to finish up the end of 1.4. Um, the last piece that we were working on in 1.4, which corresponds to two problems that are assigned actually written work problems, is called or is related to the intermediate value theorem. Oh, there it was. Okay. Theorem 1.13. 1.13 is intermediate value theorem says the following, if f is continuous on the closed interval a to b, and f of a and f of b are not the same, k is any number between f of a and f of b, then there is at least one number c in the interval a, b, where f of c equals k. So write those in, and then a picture, this is one of those pictures worth a thousand words, I mean, that's not a thousand words, but um, it sounds really complicated, and it's really not complicated at all. Um, in terms of a, a diagram. So let me a diagram for you what it's referring to. So it's saying you have a continuous curve and the endpoints are different y values. So something like this. No jumps, no gaps, nothing like that. And the y values are different. And just for the sake of having some reference points, we'll put them on an axis. We'll call this one A. We'll call this one B. So here is F of A. And up here is F of B. All right. So what this is saying is that K is a number between F of A and F of B. It doesn't say where it is. In fact, it doesn't matter. Any number that's between them will have this property. So what this theorem is saying is that there is some x value that corresponds to that y value of k. Okay, so visually from our picture, if we were to sort of trace over and down, this would be the c value that we're referencing in the theorem. And the reason it says at least one is because the diagram could have looked, you know, like this, right? It could have crossed through multiple times, and if that were the case, that, that would mean there's multiple places where f of c actually um, would equal to k. Okay? That's all the intermediate value theorem says. Somewhere in there it happened. Okay? So we can actually do problems related to the intermediate value theorem knowing these facts. So it says to verify that the e intermediate value theorem applies. Okay, so verifying it applies means checking that the conditions are, are, are being held. So the conditions that we're talking about here is that f of a does not equal f of b. That's one condition. And the other condition is that it's continuous. Because if there's gaps in the, in the curve or if there's a jump, I mean, this wouldn't have to hold, right? So we do have to make sure that it's continuous. Um, the interval needs to be closed. They're going to give us a closed interval. And the... Um, yeah, and then we're going to find the c value that corresponds to this k value. That's a typo, obviously. No, it's not. It's fine. I'll show you in a minute. Okay. So let's take a look. Um, so the first thing to do is to verify it's continuous, just in terms of how this is written. So why do we know that this graph is continuous? Any ideas on that? Okay, so what do you mean by fraction? So I think you mean like the, the denominator doesn't have a variable in it, right? There's not a denominator with a variable. Because we could have, say, like a one-half in it, and that wouldn't cause a problem, right? But if we had a denominator where we had a variable in it, that would or could cause a problem, depending on what the situation um, held in store for us. So this is continuous, um, and the reason it is is because it's a polynomial. Polynomials are always continuous. And take a look in just a second. Remember if we did that in this section or if it's later on. This one doesn't show it. Yeah, it's the section we did about limits that we talked about polynomials. I don't remember now. All right. Polynomials are always continuous. Rational functions have concerns. Radical functions have concerns. Polynomial functions never do. So this one's continuous because it's a polynomial. So this is sort of condition number one. Condition number two is checking that f of a and f of b are different. So a is two. 
that's right here, and the B is 3, and of course that's a closed interval, it's drawn or written that way. So if you were to plug in 2, what do you get? What is it? Negative 3. Good. And if you plug in 3, what do you get? 2. Can everybody get so far? So these are not equal. That was one of our other conditions. All right. Um, the next thing that it talks about in this theorem is that k is a number between f of a and f of b. This is the k value over here, 1, is 1 between 2 and negative 3. Yes. Okay. So um, f of 2 is less than 1 is less than f of 3. Um, and it could have been written the other way. Let's say, for instance, the function were a decreasing function, or at least that f of 3 were smaller than f of 2. We could just simply write the inequality the other direction, but it still would be between them. Okay? So it's between them. So this is my third condition. So if all these things hold, then we should be able to find a c value where the function equals the value 1. So how would we do that? What do you think we would do to find it? Because that's what we're actually asked to do, right? Is that it says to use this to find the value of C. Okay. Yeah, this is a Y value, right? One is simply a Y value. It's a Y value somewhere between F of 2 and F of 3. So we can actually set the function equal to that value of 1. We can solve that then, right? So x squared equals 8. How do we solve this? We square root. Um, in terms of actual, uh, like, non-rounded form, how does this simplify? Good, two squared to two. Now, technically, it's plus or minus. We don't really have two answers for this, though, because our C value, what do we know about our C value? How do we know it's positive? Right, good, good. So it's supposed to be between two and three up here, right? That's the interval that I'm supposed to be working on. You can't hardly see it now because I've circled it so many times, but it's supposed to be between two and three. Negative 2 squared to 2 would not be between 2 and 3. Agreed? Yeah, it's not going to work. So the only answer that we get is going to be the 2 squared to 2. If you wanted to confirm that 2 squared to 2 actually, in terms of a decimal approximation, was between 2 and 3, that wouldn't be a bad idea just to make sure you didn't make an error. So let's just double check it. So um, remind me. Rachel. Rachel, can you put 2 squared to 2 in your calculator for me and give me an approximation? All right, so it's 2.8. Okay, we're between 2 and 3. So the actual answer should be 2 squared to 2. That's the C value that we found. We actually write, we could write that. C equals 2.2. .2. Um, over here, it wouldn't have been a bad idea. It's, it's not a big deal, but we could have actually put in C over here, right? Because we were solving for C. That would have been a good thing to do. It's not going to make a big difference, but that is the C value that we found. Any questions on that? Okay, so verifying the conditions means checking that it's continuous, that f of a and f of b are different, and that the k value that you're given is between them. And then actually finding the c value is setting it equal to that k value and solving for c. All right, two separate parts of the problem.